Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, you guys, I am so excited. This is part two of my little crate Dollar Tree Christmas DIY. I don't really know what to call it, but you can call it whatever you like. Let me know in the comments what we should call it. Um, so without further ado, I don't wanna waste much time. There is gonna be a lot jam packed into this video. So don't forget to give it a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you haven't already. If you guys are not following me on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, that is the place to be for my off upload days because I am uploading over there almost every single day. So anyway, I will leave all the links in the description box below and let's jump into today's DIY. Stay tuned until the end, you guys. I have a little message and I didn't want to bore you guys in the beginning of the video, so I just saved it to the end, but it is a little important, so I would appreciate if you would stick around and hear that little message. So anyway, we are going to be doing all of the little decor inside of this piece that we made last week. Now, I was hoping to have this edited and up last week, um, but that didn't work out. So let's just jump right in today. So I start off with this piece from Dollar Tree. You can find it in the crafter square section. And originally I had cut the tag off of it, painted it with my cashew Waverly chalk paint, and then distressed it with my antique wax and transferred on December 25th with some holly leaves. And they were different colors. I did not like the colors. And it's crazy how when you when I set it inside of the piece, just by having different colors, the whole aesthetic was different. So I did just want to change those colors. So I went with my white Waverly chalk paint, my black chalk paste, and my candy apple. And I just transferred on that wording. And then I used my shimmer spruce for the holly leaves and the crimson for the berries. And I used a like the end of my silicone tool just to create berries. But um, this did come with with berries they were just a little bit too big for where I needed them to be so that's why I just created my own you're also going to see throughout this video that I have different angles for you guys because I just think that sometimes it's nice to see the project done from different angles so it's a little bit more work but that's okay because I think the experience is going to be much different um, but anyway once I was done with the berries then I just glued on some of my red and white buffalo check ribbon around the edging just to give it some dimension and you know tie all of those gorgeous colors together and literally that was it you guys also I want you guys to check out my friends at Gleespin Designs and Crafts Unleashed by Robin they have the most amazing channels you guys I love watching them this is a new thing I'm trying so um, I'll talk about that in the end a little bit like I said. So moving on to the next project, I just take two of these blocks from Dollar Tree. I take the tag off and then use my antique wax by Waverly to stain them and wipe off the excess with a paper towel. I then go in with my cashew Waverly chalk paint and distress all the way around the blocks. Next, I go in with my Chalk Couture Christmas Minis. I cut off the ones that I liked. And because I knew that you were only gonna be able to see three sides of these blocks, I only transferred on a design to three. But if you would like to switch them around, change them out, you can certainly um, transfer on something to all of the sides or print something out, transfer it on with graphite paper. There's so many different options. You can cut up the calendar from Dollar Tree so definitely um, the possibilities are endless and then I just transferred on what I liked like I said drying in between coats and don't forget that all of the chalk couture products I use in this video will be linked in my link tree in the description box I just love them so much you guys because it's so easy literally a five-year-old can do it there's no computer involved weeding no crazy tools it literally takes seconds so anyway that was was it so quick and easy and I just love the way that these blocks turned out so let me know in the comments what you think 
Moving on to the next project, you guys, this is so simple, it's not even funny. So, a while back, I bought a huge pack of fairy lights from Amazon. I believe there's like 24 in the pack, and it was like 20 bucks or something crazy cheap. Um, but the battery pack is really, really small. So, I took one of these light up trees from Dollar Tree, and I knew that the top was a little bit too tall. So, I just took my tin snips and snipped the top off, and then I take my fairy lights from Amazon and I just wrap them around until there is no more. Once I have wrapped them all around, then I just glue my battery pack to the bottom. And last but not least, I just glue, or actually, matter of fact, there's two more steps. I painted the bottom with my truffle Waverly chalk paint just to cover up that bottom piece. And then I made a simple shoestring bow to glue to the top in just some red, I don't even know, red jute? Is that what it's called? Yeah, red jute at the top and I glued that down. Simple, easy peasy and I stuck that in my decor piece and it literally, lo literally looks so cute. I would pick this up from any high-end store. What about you? Moving on to the next simple project. Now, this is not necessarily a Dollar Tree project. It definitely could be, and I did have a bunch of Dollar Tree greenery, but nothing that really caught my eye that I personally liked for mistletoe, but that's just me, you guys. I have been eyeing this greenery up that I have had for a while as mistletoe, so it probably was one of those things where like I already had this particular greenery in my head so like nothing else was gonna satisfy that thought if that makes sense but anyway i start off by just cutting off some of this greenery from a pick that i got from the christmas tree shops I then just glue some of the pieces in place so that it looked more full. And then I take red berries from a different pick. I take it off of the pick and then hot glue it randomly to the one that we just glued together. Last but not least, to finish this off, I created a bow with my red and white buffalo check ribbon. I glued that to the top. And then to attach this to my little box, if you guys remember, I put wallpaper from Dollar Tree in the top and the bottom of these boxes so all I did was right in the handle of the box um, above that paper I just kind of stuck it in and it literally stuck so easily and I just love the way that this turned out so you guys let me know in the comments down below what you think Okay, you guys, my husband just bought this for me. I love it so much, and I had to show you a few different angles. I had to show you it in reverse and then in forward again because I just can't get over how much this thing has come in handy and how easy it is to use. So I take one of these planks from Dollar Tree, I cut it down to size to fit inside of our little boxes, and then I paint it with my white Waverly chalk paint, giving it giving it a distress coat. Next, I go in with my mistletoe transfer and all of the chalk couture products that I use in this video will be linked in my link tree in the description box. There's a huge sale going on, so definitely don't um, miss out on that. But I had to kind of fit the free on there and unfortunately, I didn't I didn't get it even and I didn't have enough time to change it. Um, and it's really annoying me, but I just had to, you know, let it go for now. So anyway, I created a simple bow with my greenery from Hobby Lobby. I believe it's the Canadian Canadian stems. I don't know exactly, but I got them from Hobby Lobby and they come in a bunch uh, in a pack of stems. And then I take my red berry garland from Dollar Tree, wrap that around the little mini wreath, and then I just secure that down with some hot glue. Once my wreath was secured down then last but not least i go in with my antique wax and i give it um, some distressing with my wax and i just love distressing you guys and that was it i love the way that this one turned out i think that the chalk couture just gives it such amazing detail that i would not be able to achieve on my own Next, once again, this is not necessarily a Dollar Tree project, but it can be. I never found, actually I should reword that. 
I found those cute little jars from Dollar Tree with the buffalo check lids on them, but I could not for the life of me find where I put it. So I just went in my stash. I found these that I also got from the Christmas tree shops, which they were 99 cents. So basically same thing. Um, but I just start by taking the lid and giving a good coat of my crimson Waverly chalk paint. And I give the jar a coat of my steel Waverly chalk paint. Once my paint once my paint was completely dry, then I go in with my mini zip sander and I just sand random edges. I just wanted this to look old and weathered. And then I went in with my mini chip brush and my white Waverly chalk paint to further make it look old and weathered. And I dry brush that white all the way around the jar as well as the lid. Next, I go in with my mini buffalo check white and red ribbon and I just tie that around the neck of the bottle and then tie a bow and to finish this off I cut some greenery off of the same picks that I have been using and I just attach that on either side of the bow just to give it a little bit of color and tie all of those colors together. I think that all of these colors together just look absolutely gorgeous and it just gives those Christmassy vibes and looks amazing in this piece. So you can let me know in the comments down below if you think that this piece fits in this tree or if you think I should have done something different there. Okay friends, so I just want you to know that just by being here, clicking that thumbs up, hitting subscribe, sharing, all of those things really help my channel to grow and really help YouTube to notice me just a bit more. But if you would like to further support the channel, you can go to buymeacoffee.com at all things crafty if you enjoy my work and would just like to support what I do. But anyway, I didn't want to spend too much time on that. Moving on to the next project, I take this foam piece from Dollar Tree that is in the shape of a tree and I just start by measuring it and then cutting it down to size so that it will fit in our box. Now so that this will sit flat on you know in the box or even if you just wanted it on a shelf or whatever I wanted to make sure that it would sit flat so I just took some large popsicle sticks I measured out the bottom I cut those down and then glued it down and then I gave this a really good coat of my truffle Waverly chalk paint. Next, I take the same greenery that I've been using. I just love it for some reason. It it just looks so high-end to me and so realistic that I am I just keep grabbing for it every time. But all I do is just p take the picks and I start by gluing them down side by side. The next layer, I go in between those pieces. And then the last layer, I take pieces from one side to the next further up at the top pinching in the middle, putting a little bit of hot glue, making sure that it dries a little bit so you don't burn yourself or use a silicone, um, you know, finger saver, whatever they're called. Um, just make sure you don't burn yourself, but pinch it up at the top so that it gives the illusion of like the top of a tree. And I did that three times. So I did it on one side, I moved over a little bit, I did it on that side, and then I finished it off um, for the last time. And I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, um, you can go back and look and slow the clip down with the three, with the three dots in the right hand corner, um, a menu will appear and you can slow the clips down. Last but not least, I dry brush some white to give the illusion of snow, and I just love the way that this tree turned out. So moving on to one of my favorites in this whole piece, I take this little tag ornament from Dollar Tree and I just pull it apart and then I um, cut it down to size so that again it would fit in these little boxes. I then just sand all of that glitter off and give one of the sides a, go a good two coats of my Crimson Waverly chalk paint and then once those coats were dry, I dry brushed it with my white Waverly chalk paint. For the back piece, I take this scrapbook paper that I got from Michaels or Hobby Lobby. Don't quote me, but I know it was one or the other. And I just cut that out and then attach it with some of my disappearing purple glue stick. Once that was attached, then I just kind of lay these together. I put them in the box before I glue it down. That way I know again that it will fit. And then once I know it'll fit, then I just use some hot glue to attach those together. 
Next, I go in with my mini Christmas minis chalk couture transfer and I chose the Noel. I thought that it looked gorgeous with this so I transferred that on with my white Waverly chalk paint. Again the Christmas minis will be in my link tree and then to finish this off I took a piece of greenery glued that down to the top. I made a simple bow with this red and cream colored ribbon. I glued that down to the bottom of the greenery and that was it you guys. I love this one so much. I don't know, this might be my favorite. Let me know in the comments down below which mini is your favorite. Moving on to another super simple project, I take this mini terracotta pot from Dollar Tree and usually I put rocks in the bottom of these but I didn't have any so I just used some pine cones um, just to give this tree some height and then I put a bunch of hot glue on top of the pine cones and then stuck my tree in there. Next, I dry brushed it with some white once again to give the illusion of snow. And to finish it off, I created a tiny little bow to glue to the top of our tree. And once again, that quick and easy. And I just love the way that this tree turned out. So for our last project, you guys, if you are here, you're absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for sticking around. Check me out on TikTok and all of, uh, all of my other social medias. I have been dropping these DIYs before this video. So if you want to see content before I put it on YouTube, definitely go check me out. But all I did was just create stain with different colors. So um, green and a little bit of glitter and some water and... Um, I used some gold paint. I just used some different colors. Some I made stain, some I did not. And I just put the colors on where I liked them. And then once they were dry, I just dry brushed some black all the way around to make all of the little details stand out. And I just love that little truck so much. So for the last part of this project, I'm going to show you guys how to do the base and the star of this tree. So I start off with these little boxes, with one of these little boxes from Dollar Tree, and I just glue the middle part down. I then stain it with my Antique Wax by Waverly, wiping off the excess. And then to finish this box off, I take some of these skinny sticks, or coffee stirs, whatever you would like to call them. And I just kind of measure out the frame and cut those down, gluing those down with some Gorilla Hot Glue. And then I also measured out the X piece in the middle. I cut those down and glue those down as well. And then I stained those with my antique wax. And last but not least, of course, you guys know I had to dry brush. If it is not dry brush, then I don't feel that the project is finished. I just love the way that it looks. It brings out all of those details. It looks old and rustic, which is right up my alley. Let me know, you guys. I'm always curious and thinking. It's so interesting for people who love farmhouse decor, but you just don't like dry brushing and the distressing. It's just super interesting to me. So let me know in the comments, are you a distressed kind of person or are you more of the modern clean look? So to attach this box, I should say moving right along. To attach this box, I just put some hot glue down. Now I would recommend to use a stronger holding glue like E6000 or something of that nature, just to ensure that this is not gonna go anywhere. But for video purposes, I just use hot glue and I attach that to the middle of the bottom of my boxes. Last but not least, I take this galvanized star from the Crafter Square section at Dollar Tree. I take my antique wax and I just kind of dry brush in random spots, focusing on the edging because when things rust, usually the edging goes first. So I just like to focus on the edges and then randomly put um, rust spots um, all over the place. Normally for this, I was looking for my cinnamon. I was going to do my Mod Podge and cinnamon rust trick, but of course I moved things around in my craft room. I could not find it after 20 minutes. I was like, okay, Melissa, it's not that deep. So 
next time um i know there's a lot of new people i'll show you guys how to do the rust technique but anyway um once i had this all dry brushed then i just attached it to the top with some hot glue and you can see my little helper here she's so sweet you guys always in the craft room helping me and i just love it so much I'll have those memories for years to come. So anyway, once that was attached and I put all of my little decor pieces inside, I am so satisfied. It is such a good feeling to have it all done, to step back and look at it, and just to take pride knowing that I used my hands, I took my time, I focused, and I really put my all into these projects, and I know that you guys can do the same. If you guys make this project, please tag me on Instagram. Instagram. I love to see your recreations. It's my favorite thing about my job. So definitely do that. Let me know. Um, also, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. You might as well become part of this crafty family. We have so much fun around here and we do lots of fun things. So you don't want to miss out on anything like that. Um, what else am I forgetting, you guys? Oh, don't forget to share this video because those thumbs up and those shares really help my channel to grow and help YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Don't forget to follow me, like I said, on my other social medias. And if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely amazing and gorgeous. You are worthy. And I love you with all my heart and soul. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Hey friends, editing me here and all my glory. There's no fancy lighting, anything like that. I was just editing and I realized that I did not explain this one little part to you guys. So there's gonna be some changes on my channel. I'm, I'm always working to improve the experience for you guys, the you know quality, like I'm always working to improve for you guys. So, um, in that journey, I really wanted to help smaller channels grow. And I know that some people have done that differently in the past. Um, that looked like different things for different people. Um, but for me personally, I felt that it was very important to selflessly help somebody. Um, I didn't want it to be like a barter thing, you know, like you help me, I'll help you. Like, I didn't want it to be that type of thing. I just wanted it to be, hey, I like this channel. I think you guys will too. Go check them out. And I think that it can be a really fun way for you guys to find new people and for me to help smaller creators get out there more, get their name out there. So um, I think I'm going to do it twice per month um, on my channel. I will promote two different channels. So four channels that month will be promoted and I will just pop up on the screen like hey check these channels out I really like them blah 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 and then I'll leave their links in the description box and I'll also promote them on on my other social media platforms as well so if you have a smaller channel and you would just like some help to get your channel noticed definitely reach out to me we are going to be doing the earrings of the week. Um, all these fun new things. I'm going to do earrings of the week a little bit differently. That'll be coming the beginning of the year. I also have another surprise for you for the beginning of the year. And I'm going to do a giveaway in this video. So if you stayed through this entire spiel, leave a red heart in the comments and I will enter you to win a giveaway and I'll pick a winner in about a week. So I know that was long winded, you guys. I just wanted to let you guys know of all those little changes and just to be looking out for some differences. So with all that being said, thank you guys so much for being here. None of this would be possible without you. All of my gratitude, all of like everything that I do, I owe it to you guys and I just want you guys to know 
that I'm always looking of ways to help you, improve it for you, and, you know, just be the best creator and YouTuber, you know, your favorite YouTuber that I can be because without you guys, all things crafty doesn't exist. So anyway, I love you guys so much. Let's jump back in.